uh, we're going to talk to Sierra Gadare. She's the GM of the Gasno Guiding Company in Juneau, Alaska. We have a time difference, Sierra, don't we? We absolutely do. It's still early. I'll be drinking my coffee a little bit through the interview. So forgive me. Four hours makes quite the difference. <laughs> yeah. It's your breakfast time. I'm, I've already had lunch, but that's okay. It's great to have you on our program, the experience program where we talk to um, companies and organizations like yours that have the GBAC Star facility accreditation. But tell us about the Gastineau Guiding Company. I believe this is a unique story. Yeah, we are a locally owned and operated company. We've been locally owned for, gosh, 28 years now here in Juneau. So we're very much family run. Um, and we are a shore excursion operator. So if somebody takes a cruise to Alaska and they book a tour through the cruise lines, it's a big misconception, but you're honestly going with a locally owned company. I mean, we are one of over two dozen locally owned operators here in Juneau. There's, there's a lot of shore excursion options in Juneau. We're known for that. We're a big cruise ship port, but we are just one of them. And we're kind of a higher end boutique uh, whale watching and hiking company. So we do fully guided, uh, very educational experiences. We have a couple specialty tours like our photo photography tour. So we hire professional photographers. We have a citizen science tour. So we are really focused on small group personalized experiences. And we do that with our cruise line partners. They bring over 95% of the guests who visit Juno in a summer typically come on a cruise line. So um, they keep us busy most of the time. <laughs> yes, I've, I've been on a cruise ship and I think we went well watching from Juno. Maybe it was on one of your boats. It was, they took us out there and we saw them. It was really cool. So oh, we, are, we are so lucky. We even, we're so confident. We have a whale sighting guarantee. So if you don't see a whale, you actually get a hundred dollars cash back and I've been doing this for almost eight years now, and I've only had to do that twice. So we're very blessed. There are whales. In fact, yesterday I was down practicing our new G by clean procedures on our whale watching vessels, and there was a whale in the harbor. Like our boat was parked, and I'm in there electrostatic spraying, and boom, it's just feeding right off the side of the boat. So totally spoiled. <laughs> Neat story. So our cruise ship starting to come back? Um, that is the plan. So right now, um, the cruise lines are working hard in partnership with the CDC on their healthy return to sail procedure. So very nebulous. A lot of the cruise lines are practicing cruising with vaccinated passengers in the Caribbean right now. But fingers crossed, everything goes well, and they make their way up to Alaska in late July. So We'll have a very truncated season, just August and September into kind of the beginning of October. But from our perspective, you know, we haven't operated since October of 2019. So it'll almost be two years of no tours for us. So even a truncated season, there's there's a blessing in that, that we get to practice our new GBAC cleaning procedures and kind of shake the dust off and more importantly, like we love what we do. I mean, most of our staff are locals. In fact, every single staff member who works this summer is going to be a local. And uh, we like being out on the water. The whales are still cool for us too. So I'm just excited we get to be back out there. And even just being on the boat in the harbor yesterday was exciting because it's just so fun. What a, what a perk. <laughs> So Sierra, tell us about your company culture and how you folks value the facility you work in. You know, for our guests, our goal is really to get everybody away from the crowd. So we don't use facilities on our tours. We're all on the boat or on the trail or on the bus. So that, of course, is important to us. But for me, the reason I thought about seeking out the GVAC certification is while our guests never see the facility, it's so critical to our company culture. Like our our guides genuinely like learning from each other. And, you know, we're just a bunch of educators who value information and sitting around the table and talking about what whale you saw out on the water today versus the new calf that I spotted out on the water today. So that social aspect is, I think, a big reason why people come back and work for us. They, they make lifelong friends and over half a dozen marriages and <laughs> stuff like that. So being able to reassure my guests or my guides, my staff that 
this, that our facility that only they see was still safe for them. That was definitely the reason that I chose to seek out the GVAC certification. Well, we're glad, we're glad you did. Can you share with us some tangible improvements or changes that your facility implemented because of GVAC star accreditation? I mean, just the whole thing. It, it's really intimidating. Um, you know, I'm not a professional cleaner. I, I mean, I happen to have a chemistry degree, but it's still really intimidating to look at all of these technical, you know, cleaning tools and, and supplies. And so for me, GVAC was really just like a coach, right? Where I thought I knew, okay, I looked into electrostatic sprayers. I could I could piece together my own procedure on, on what I thought we should do, but it's, it's not my expertise. So GBAC was so helpful in that sense. In some ways, they really parsed down what I thought I needed to do um, and, and, and really streamlined the experience. So not to, not to paint with too broad a brush, but it was just helpful to, to clean up that procedure and make it accessible, not only for me, but more importantly, for the staff that are actually out there doing it every day. You know, mm -hmm. repetition makes you lazy sometimes. So talking to GBAC about how to make it simple and easy for, for them to do after every tour, that was super helpful. Let's talk about, you know, you're dealing with the pandemic right now, but what about post pandemic? How will GBAC star facility accreditation benefits you then? Will we ever get back to normal is a really a pertinent question, particularly for us here in the cruise line industry. I mean, anyone in Juno, as I mentioned before, you know, over 95% of the people who come to Juno, whether you're taking a shore excursion like gastronomic guiding, or you're taking a different tour through an independent agency, whatever, you're still getting 95% of your people from cruise line. So you know, I do think out of all of the industries, um, the cruise lines are going to be the last ones, if ever, to return to normal. So I, I definitely do think these changes we've made with our GVAC procedures will last a long time, possibly forever. Um, so yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways too, you know, we're really all about our employee manuals and our checklists here. And it's kind of seamless. It's not like I'm going through my manual and being like, GBAC said to do this, GBAC said to do that. It's more, it's a seamless transition where we just do this now. Um, you know, we have 15 electrostatic sprayers now. And in some ways, that's a lot easier than taking a wipe and, you know, wiping down everything. So I don't see why we would ever go back. In your networking, my final question, if your organization like yours were to talk to another one, what would you tell them about GVAC star accreditation? Would you recommend it? What advice would you give them? Don't think too hard about the initial application because they should see it more as a coaching process. I was actually just talking to an acquaintance of mine who owns another shore excursion operation company here. And he expressed that the application was really long and, oh, it just seemed like so much work. And, and what about this question? What about this question? And it's sort of like, well, do what you can, don't be intimidated by it, and then turn it in. Even if in your head you feel like it's a little incomplete, that's what your coach helps you with. And I know their title isn't officially coach, but that's how I thought about it, right? Um, don't be intimidated. You know, they will help. That's what they're here to do. You know, the person I worked with wanted me to succeed. So it's not like a quiz. You don't have to get 100% on your first pass. Um, so I would definitely say don't be intimidated by the application.